everyone to the May 26th, 2020 um, City Council, Ogden City Council meeting. Please let the record reflect that all council members are present with the exception of Council Member Nadolski, who is asked to be excused. And we'll start with the approval of minutes. So uh, we have first the joint community session of October 8th, 2019, and work session of January 21st, 2020. That's Council Member Heyer. Yes, Chair, I have reviewed those and found them to be accurate. Thank you. And work session of February 4th, 2020, uh, Council Member Lopez. Yes, Chair, they're correct. And joint work session of February 11th, 2020, uh, Council Member Stevens. Yes, Chair, they're correct. Thank you. And finally, special meeting of March 10th, 2020, Council Member White has agreed to approve those. I did that in eight minutes. Yes, I've reviewed those and I move that we adopt the minutes. I second it. Thanks. We have a motion by Council Member White and a second by Council Member Stevens. And this is a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. That passes. So um, next on the agenda is the common consent, uh, the consideration of appointments of diversity commissioners, appointments of Stacy Joy Bernal and Thomas Sasley, and the reappointments of Betty Sawyer, Taylor Knuth, and Jeremy Shinoda. And this is a uh, voice vote. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Do we need a motion? Yeah, I need a motion. We need oh. a motion. Okay. Okay. I'll we'll take a motion. <laughs> Sorry. Make a motion to approve the items listed under common consent. Thank you. I second. Thank you. So we have a motion by Council Member or Vice Chair Blair and a second by Council Member Lopez. Okay, let's try it again. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great, that passes. And I see that several of the members of the Diversity Commission are on the call, and um, we certainly want to thank them so much for their volunteer service and uh, hope that um, they have a great term of service. All right, next we have public hearing, um, Ogden Hinckley Airport Improvements. Um, so first we'll have a presentation by the manager, Bryant Garrett. Sorry, I had to get it unmuted. Uh, give me one second, I'll share the screen. No problem. <clears throat> All right, yeah. is that full screen for everybody now? Yes. Chair Chaburka? Yes. That is, uh, looks like he's ready to provide the master plan, but we're doing oh. the airport, the capital improvement and the budget. So I saw Lisa was ready. Maybe it's Lisa that's supposed to make these presentations. Oh, so sorry. I apologize. Um, yes. So um, this will be on the agenda after this public hearing. Okay, I'm sorry, uh, everybody else is breaking up. You want me to try and start it again? Um, actually, this is the uh, point on the agenda where we're talking about the capital improvement plan. Um, and so Lisa is probably the presenter. Of, oh, there you are, Lisa. Sorry, I was looking for your name, and there you are. Sorry to add confusion to the, the evening. That's no all right. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I am the city comptroller. Um, there are two actions before you this evening for consideration. One is to amend the fiscal year 20 CIP plan to add um, airport terminal improvements. Uh, it's referred to as AR005. Uh, the brief describes several improvements to the terminal. Um, and in relation to that, I, would you like me to present both actions in one one? 
presentation. Is that all right? Or Absolutely. If you don't mind, okay. then we'll have public input about both items. They're so interrelated. I, it makes sense to me to do that. So I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> and in relation with that CIP that is proposed to be adopted into the current year plan, there is also a budget opening proposed. Uh, are you able to see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, let's see if mine works on presentation. Does that look okay? Perfect. It does. Okay, good. Um, <clears throat> the budget opening before you uh, proposes an appropriation of 110000 in the airport fund. Uh, this is a portion of AR005. This is to repair and replace uh, the airport terminal roof. The um, CIP appropriation is 110,000. Uh, and that is, or excuse me, 210,000. And that is coming from BDO lease revenue in the amount of 110,000. Uh, and um, <clears throat> uh, funding from the CIP fund of 100,000 and, and also um, a transfer in of BDO lease revenue for the 100,000 for uh, airport improvement planning. Uh, this is uh, for the, the infrastructure needed on the west side of the airport to give them some design and engineering money so they can get started on planning planning for, for the needed improvements to the airport there. The total appropriation to the budget would be $320,000. Do you have any questions regarding either of these actions before you? Lisa, I have a quick question for you. Sure. Um, and it, and it's, it's, um, it's more about the, the CIP critical contingency fund. Mm -hmm. So, is that normally for one project or do you normally in a CIP critical contingency fund use more for overruns and those kind of things or we it just, use, it, yeah, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, <clears throat> we have used it for multiple things over the years. Um, things that come to mind are improvements to El Monte. The El Monte Foundation had some issues, the clubhouse. Uh, we used 70,000 one year for that, the clubhouse improvements. Um, last year, I believe we used it for search Simmons for the park, the, the lighting. Um, there was some leftover from the prior year and I think we appropriated 124,000 that was in the critical contingency for that project. We can certainly give you a list. Um, <clears throat> it really has depended on what the needs were and what was available in the critical project contingency. No, I, 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 that's great. I just wondered what it was usually normally for, used for. So. Yeah, it's been for a variety of things and, and uh, we would certainly be happy to provide you a list of what that's been funded for. I believe we've used a portion of it every year that council has funded it for a purpose. And we've well, always come to council and asked for permission to use those funds. Great, thank you. Uh-huh. And I don't necessarily need a list, thank you. Oh. I didn't <laughs> I want you to go, so. <laughs> I know, I didn't want you to go run off and do that right now, so thank you. <laughs> Anytime. Any additional questions for Lisa? Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Um, so next we have the opportunity to get some public input if they'd like to make any comments about these items. And Brandon Garside, our communications manager, will explain that to you. To um, proceed with the, the public hearing, if you would, if you would like to um, address the council, you may do so by raising your hand, which is at the bottom of the Zoom application. Um, this will notify us, and then you'll have three minutes to address the council about this item. Um, this feature is this feature is only available um, if you are calling into the Zoom meeting. Um, but there are also opportunities to um, 
address, I guess, you know, maybe now is too late for this, but there are all, all other means to address the council online at ogdencity.com slash public input, as well as the council public comment hotline, um, which is 801-629-8158. Thanks so much, Brandon. Yeah, and just um, for everyone's information, you can see in the packet as well that we did not have any written public comments submitted about this item or any item um, over the past week. Um, so now we'll open up for public input. If you would just uh, state your name for the record and then keep your comments to three minutes. Angel Castillo, uh, you are, have been unmuted and your time begins now. Thank you. Um, thanks to everybody for doing what you do for the council. Um, I am 100% in full support of repairing the airport roof. It is critical to maintain a structure that we have. And um, while we spend a lot of money on the airport, I do believe that it is uh, a key part of Ogden's future. Um, that being said, I'm not a 100% supportive of spending $100,000 to continue to develop a plan for future expansion and engineering. We are in a critical time right now where we're supposed to be contracting and tightening up our belts. And that is $100,000 that could be better spent in multiple other areas, um, specifically aiding uh, Chief Watt in running his department and other community efforts. So that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not seeing any other hands raised. I'm not sure if anyone else um, would like to make comment. I'm not seeing any, if anybody would like to motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. And so we have a motion by Council Member Heyer, a second by Vice Chair Blair to close the public hearing. And now we have two items up for action. You want to get the- uh, You want to take a vote? A vote. Close. Oh, yes. I'm so sorry. I'm really off my game tonight. <laughs> you have to just give me exact directions for everything I'm supposed to do. Okay, that's a voice vote. So all in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you guys so much. Thanks for your patience with me. I, maybe I'm, it's my hunger. <laughs> I didn't have a chance to eat anything. Um, that's what I'll blame it on anyway. Okay, so now we have two possible actions. Chair, I'll uh, make a motion that we adopt uh, ordinance 2020-10. Second. A motion by Councilmember Heyer, a second by Councilmember Lopez, and this is a roll call vote. Councilmember Heyer? Aye. Councilmember Lopez? Aye. Councilmember Stevens? Aye. Councilmember White? Aye. Vice Chair Blair? Aye. Chair Chaburka? Aye, and that passes. Chair, I'll make another motion that we adopt ordinance 2020-11. Second. So a motion by council member Heyer and a second by vice chair Blair um, for proposed ordinance 2020-11. This is also a roll call vote. Council member Lopez. Aye. Council member Stevens. Aye. Councilmember White? No. Councilmember Heyer? Aye. Vice Chair Blair? Aye. Chair Chaburka? Aye. And that passes. Um, Councilmember White, would you like to speak to your no vote? Yeah, just real quick, and I think it and it, it has nothing to do with the roof. I do think we need, probably do need a roof on our terminal, and I do agree that the airport is very important. I just have some reservations that we continue to use city general fund money to support the airport, and that's it. I understand why we have to do it. I understand all of that. I just want to make sure that um, 
we continue to think. And I know that the master plan is coming, so I'm excited for that because I do think that that's going to move us in a in the uh, positive direction. So I just wanted to get a no vote on there just for those reasons. Thank you. And I'm, I can just make some comments. I do. I, I agree with you also. I have deep concerns about the continued funding of the airport from the general fund. Um, yeah, so I'm very excited about the master plan as well. And I'm, I'm very hopeful that will get us in the right place. <clears throat> Great, so now I believe we're gonna have a report from the Planning Commission and this is where Airport Manager um, Bryant Garrett will present to us the master plan. All right, thank you and uh, we'll, we'll try it again. You bet, and then after you get set up, if you'd like to introduce the other folks you have attending, you can do that too. I certainly will, thank you. So the two others, uh, the people that actually made the master plan happen that are uh, participating tonight would be uh, Wendy uh, Rainier and Dana Hartshorn. Um, they uh, are the consultants selected for the uh, uh, conducting the master plan uh, started in uh, 2018. So just to go over some key points here, the uh, FAA master plan is required by the FAA for all uh, AIP, which is airport improvement funding. That's the grants we get every year. And uh, uh, the feds generally participate to 90.63% uh, of our capital projects, which leaves the uh, city having to come up with the local share of 9.37%. This project began in 2018. Uh, kicked off in November of 2018, and we're coming to the uh, hopefully close to the finish line at uh, with a, uh, a vote this evening. Uh, the last master plan was done in 1994, so we're 26 years uh, since the last one. Uh, stepping through the uh, slides real quickly here, uh, kind of give you an idea, this is to find a big picture. You know, we build something, let's say it's a, like a terminal building. It makes it so that we didn't put it in a spot that can only be done where a new apron has to go. So it, it causes uh, uh, us to think uh, the strategically for all the placement of our uh, facilities uh, and be able to respond to the industry when there's changes to be made. FAA requires everything that's on the uh, project, or excuse me, that's on the uh, ALP, which is the last component of the master plan. If it's not on the ALP, it can't be funded. And if it's on the ALP, it's eligible for funding. It's pretty much that simple. Okay, this is not done in a vacuum. It's, uh, we bring lots of people into it. I believe there was uh, at the beginning, uh, you have to forgive me just slightly. I started in January of 2019 and this kicked off in October of uh, 2018. So just three or four months before I started. But we started off with a user or a pilot survey and we had over 200 responses that came back, uh, essentially satisfaction with how the uh, uh, the, the facilities were, what they felt was needed. We also put together a planning advisory committee to work all the way from the beginning through to the end. And uh, the uh, makeup of that committee will be shown in, in one of the next slides, but essentially it's to be a good cross section of the users of the airport and those stakeholders that have vested interest. We had two public information workshops where all the um, all the items that had been brought up to that point were displayed and there was open forum for questions. We did quite a bit of uh, open advertising. All the working papers were put onto the uh, city airport uh, specific uh, website. We had newsletters going out uh, uh, and email communications and it was quite extensive uh, how hard we uh, chose to uh, reach out to the aviation community. This gives you a little bit of the uh, makeup of the uh, committee. 
And uh, as you can see, there was a little bit of everything involved in there, uh, including our local uh, neighbors, uh, uh, other jurisdictions, the state aeronautics, and uh, all fashions of uh, uh, general aviation and uh, so forth. Okay, so these are the major components of the system. The um, top one, the geographic, uh, it's called an AGIS. And that is something that most airports have done years ago. Um, in, in Ogden's case, it's the first time there's been a survey of the actual approaches and departures of the, uh, the four runway ends at uh, the Ogden airport. We then inventory everything that was already on the field, all the facilities we have. We then forecast what the future demand is going to be. And the forecast is one of the two components that have to be approved by the FAA. Um, those two components would be the what's called the uh, uh, terminal area forecast. And it compares what our consultants came up with uh, to what the FAA comes with a national um, terminal area forecast. So it looks at us locally and what we think we're going to do here. And it looks at the reasonability of comparing that to the federal. Uh, we look at the facilities that are required to meet that demand. And then we put together alternatives. We had five alternatives. And the key to the alternatives is we never select just one. You pick the one that most fits the uh, perceived needs, and then you can take uh, uh, and give from the other alternatives until you come up with the preferred alternative. And then the plan implementation essentially tells you what's going to be done in priority order and um, essentially how it's going to be funded. And then you have the ALP, which is the second thing that is uh, uh, ha has to be approved by the FAA. Okay, in this particular case, these are the metrics. And I like to point out that, you know, when you look at these things, if you go down to the bottom metric, which is airport uh, aircraft operations, we show that in 2038, we're gonna hit 93,000 operations. Well, this uh, started the base year of 2017, 2018. Well, last year, we had 116,000 operations. So we exceeded what this plan tells us we would not uh, have and, uh, until after 2038. And the rationale behind that is, is the FAA requires reasonability when you compare what our consultants came up with and what the FAA national terminal area forecast says. So. It's no, uh, uh, it's not a bad mark on our consultants. They did what was required, but the FAA just holds us to a very uh, small percentage increase, and they want to, uh, uh, they want to argue about anything that's higher than what the national average is. Brian, can I ask a question? Absolutely, go ahead. So um, there are things that happen that year, you know, like nine eleven. Um, you know, changed a lot of things in the aviation industry. Uh, what were the operations uh, pre-9-11 uh, uh, versus, uh, so, you know, shortly after? Did, did they go down a lot or was it just my perception or how, how did things change there? I no, guess they, I went, really, they, they, they went down substantially. Uh, general aviation didn't get hurt. It did initially, but it came back uh, faster than the airlines because very similar to COVID-19 demand, people were scared to fly. And so the airlines took a bigger hit than general aviation. General aviation went down substantially, but then came back rather quickly. And it, again, comparing COVID-19 to 9-11, you have... Um, in March, we were only down 5% compared to the previous March. But when April hit, uh, our numbers for April just came in not long ago, and they were down 50%. So uh, you're going to take a hit. But if you looked at uh, our record, so I said 116. I was off by, by 3,000. It's 113,000. It's at the bottom of the slide. 
But the key there is, is that is not the highest year we've ever had, which occurred back in, I believe, 96 or 97. So we've gone up and down. Um, kind of if you're above 50,000 operations, you're considered a fairly uh, successful general aviation airport. That answer your question? All right. So there are other addition, additional metrics here, uh, the needs for simultaneously parking uh, aircraft, those are our tie downs or apron locations, and how much additional square footage would be needed. We have um, 163 uh, buildings. Now, I have 147 leases and the reconciliation of leases to buildings is why well, I have several buildings out there that have 10 hangars in them. So one building, 10 hangars. Each uh, hangar would end up with a, a lease in our system. So uh, Ogden, by almost any general aviation measurement, is a very busy airport. Uh, we even consider the off-airport uh, parking areas where the uh, Camp Jet Center is. Um, additional aircraft uh, requiring storage, those are hangars, how many additional hangars we may need. We're going to go over the short-term, intermediate, and long-term several times uh, through the presentation, and it's roughly a five-year, 10-year, and then a 20-year horizon. So short-term, five years, 2023, and then 10 years, and then uh, uh, 20 years. And the 2028 is just based on the fact that it's uh, – uh, this this started off in 2018. Okay, this is the terminal building and how many passengers per hour that it's designed to handle. And it shows the continual growth of the airline traffic. Uh, we've tied airline traffic to the population growth of the area. So just continuing a line uh, into the future based on a comparison of both our current passengers, and then as the population in the general area grows, so does the passenger traffic. Okay, we got parking, both rental cars, uh, employee parking and uh, pay parking. How many linear feet have for curbside drop-off? Okay, and then some long-term uh, considerations here. Um, and this is all leading up to the preferred uh, alternative that we're going to look at. Okay, again, five um, alternatives that were put together. There's uh, a list of airside and landside components that were common in each one. We even had one that indicated with us closing one of the two runways and going with a single runway environment. Um, that one was not the selected alternative, but it just shows the diversity of choice that our uh, consultants gave us. Okay, these are the uh, five alternates and you can see their components as you run down the list on the left hand side, showing how much um, uh, with alternate D on the top line having only one runway, uh, whether a runway extension was needed, whether we needed improvements on the approach, how many additional acres of uh, general aviation hangars and apron would be needed. So as you can see, it's quite extensive. And then the key elements, and I'll jump to the map and show you the uh, preferred alternative momentarily. But if you take a look at the east side and west side's developments, east side is pretty much very close to being built out with really one uh, area of um, uh, target for um, economic development and what's called an MRO or a uh, maintenance repair and overhaul facility. Uh, note where the terminal is now and then where it will be on the new um, preferred alternative, uh, where the new hangars are going in and taxiways, aprons and fuel storage. Uh, also, there'll be some land acquisition. I'll point out some key points on that. Okay, this is the preferred alternative, and I apologize. It's a lot of information in a small space, but I think everybody on the council has had a copy of this that you can review much closer. Uh, the key components here would be some land acquisition up on the uh, northwest side, and this is uh, tracks 
or excuse me, it's a front runner that goes right through the middle of this. Uh, portion of this is under contract even uh, right now and giving us the opportunity to make this land acquisition sometime in the near future. We've got some additional land acquisition here on the south end and a little bit in here. Uh, we also point out the trailer park, which is on uh, off of 1900 on the west side, as being desirable for us to acquire that land sometime in the future. The terminal building moves from east side to west side, and there are FBO facilities on both sides of the field. And a hazmat, which is a critical component to many of the MRO activities that involve military aircraft, having to do with the possibility of dealing with uh, hydrazine or any other hazardous materials. And this is the area that at current is uh, still undeveloped and is available for MR, MRO activity, as is the larger area on the uh, west side of the field. Do you have any questions at this point? All right, then moving on. The implementation, that's the real meat and potatoes of the plan because that's essentially the priority order and it also sets up how we're gonna pay for all this and kind of looks at the airport finances and the feasibility of getting federal funding for projects. Again, the short term, intermediate term and the long term and uh, how much money we anticipate to uh, get from the FAA out of those time periods. So $17 million here with a local match. And then this is uh, um, additional funding. Um, uh, we've received a, a fair amount of money from the state in the past. And I know we have uh, $6 million hopefully pending and that money would be included in this number. There isn't a dollar for dollar location and you'll notice in future years, we rely heavily on a third party uh, developers to come in and build facilities. And this would be the dollar value of those facilities. Um, I would wanna point out that there's nothing in this plan that requires that the city do anything with the current finances at the airport. These are, there is a list of projects that bring these totals up. And these are the best engineering estimates of a um, uh, order of magnitude of what they would cost and the total amounts and the full investment in the uh, airport over 20 years would be roughly $450 million. Any questions at this point? Okay, the ALP is a plan set of uh, drawings that run 20 to 30 pages. Uh, they have everything from a profile view of the approaches and the obstacles that are out there that could cause uh, uh, not so much problems, but they could reduce our minimums. So when you come in with a uh, on a precision instrument approach, you have two measurements. One is forward looking visibility and the other one is what's called a decision height. And so as you're coming down at different points of elevation, you are restricted to being able to continue on to land if you have forward looking visibility right now, we're at three quarters of a mile. And the decision height just tells you on the approach path at a certain point, if you don't have the airport environment in sight, then you'd have to do a missed approach. And right now I believe that that measurement is uh, 400 feet. So you can get those to go down substantially by us removing some uh, obstacles. Um, hopefully most of them are trees. I believe there's seven trees on the uh, south end of one runway and I've got three on the other. But then to get them to go down even lower, we uh, may have to deal with uh, other objects that have to remain that may have to be illuminated with a uh, flashing light or things along those lines. 
we have all of the um, components of the preferred plan onto the ALP, so they would be eligible for future funding. So Brian, I, I have one question. I'd like to go back to the uh, slide just before the one you were just talking about, the match. Uh, right here? Short, yes, the short term. Yes. The 1.7 million, when is that gonna be funded or when do you project that to be funded? That's on a pay as you go basis. So we get two levels of funding from the FAA and one is entitlements. And so being an air carrier airport, we are entitled to $1 million annually. That roughly turns out to be a project that's $1.1 million uh, because uh, of the additional amount. Essentially, they're gonna come up with a million. We have to come up with our 9.62, I think it's 9.62% of it. Um, and so we have a project coming up this year that uh, if the FAA funds the whole thing this year would probably be around $4 million. And then we would, to obtain that grant, we would have to agree that when that grant comes to a conclusion that you know we have participated in that 9% uh, of funding. So it's on a pay as you go basis over five years. And so we'd have to have that in this budget coming forward then? No. Okay. That part of it, that one project that I spoke of, which is the North Apron, that would have to be in the coming year's budget. Okay. All right. I just wondered when that amount would match would come out of our budget there. So, okay. Very good. Thank you. Do I have any other questions uh, from the, uh, the council? I've got another question about the uh, decision height. Uh, is that anything that is going to attract or dissuade uh, commercial uh, traffic from coming into here? At the level that we are right now, no, it's not. Um, it, it depends on the, uh, the local weather conditions and having kind of cut my teeth in this industry at the Salt Lake International Airport, Ogden enjoys a much better uh, VFR climate. Uh, at, we just don't get the fog that they get out at the Salt Lake International Airport. And history has shown that, you know, we'll be a reliever site for uh, those uh, aircraft that don't have either the crew or the instrumentation on the aircraft to come in when the uh, conditions are essentially zero zero, they can't they can't uh, see anything out there. Then they'll come to Ogden because our weather is usually within their minimums. I, I thought our Ogden was a MDH was two hundred feet. I it was at one time okay. the Aegis the Aegis survey that we just completed found obstacles uh, trees uh, that that essentially have increased those minimums. And yeah, I'd like to get them back, uh, but they are not uh, dissuading any traffic at, at, at this point that I'm aware of. Okay, thank can you. I, can I jump in? Sure. Please. Hi, this is Dana Hartshorn. And uh, the decision height, uh, as Brian indicated, when the Aegis survey was completed, which was a, a big aerial survey of, of Ogden Airport and the surrounding area, it found literally hundreds of obstructions. The first response from FAA was, we got all these uh, to cure, and we went to the flight procedures folks in uh, Seattle and talked with them, and they came back and ultimately and found these seven trees that were obstructions. And it, and it wasn't as bad as what the initial um, response had been from another group. Um, and at this point, I just checked. May 21st, um, you were published for uh, 267 feet. Uh, and so we're almost down to 250, which is as low as we're going to get uh, with the current configuration. Um, in fact, it's as low as we may reasonably ever get. <clears throat> but when those trees are removed, we would let the we would inform the FAA, and of course, they would then reevaluate the approach, um, just as they just did, uh, knowing about the trees. They'd reevaluate it, knowing the trees are, re are removed, and uh, and it would go back down probably to 250 again when we're done. 
And, and if I can, one other thing on the budget, um, this particular year, because of COVID-19, FAA appro- Congress appropriated to FAA another half a billion dollars to pay the matching funds for all the grants that are issued in 2020. So we have the $1.7 million without the need to match that this year. And then um, there's other money that, as Brian indicated, could be funded in to increase the total amount of the grant, and that would all be without match this year. Next year, we don't know because the appropriations are not done. Um, after 9-11, FAA changed the grant match from nominally 90% um, to 95%, and they kept it there for about seven years, I believe. Um, so I expect that, that because of airport revenues, you know, kind of crashing through this, that in order to keep the projects going and keep building the infrastructure that they know they need, that will they'll be lobbied fairly heavily to uh, continue this 100% grant or maybe 95 or 98%, something like that, depending on, on the mood of Congress. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions at this point? Well, thank you uh, for the opportunity, and I'll turn it back to you. Uh, oh, to, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I have, I have one uh, for Ryan. In your budget, uh, I notice on your map you have uh, an area that's under the area of green, the MRO. It's under under lease contract. Uh, will we have to purchase that in the next uh, year or so, or? How is that conducted? Is that part of your budget this year? That would be part of a future year budget uh, because we have, I think uh, we have an option for five years on it. Um, and essentially at the end of it, then we have to make a decision. So essentially we have contract control over it, but we've got to consummate the purchase if we choose to in the future. And yes, that would be part of the airport budget, airport or CED. Okay. And what is an MRO, briefly? Um, it, it's a uh, maintenance, repair, and overhaul facility. So the C-130 project that we're hoping comes to Ogden, that's for doing MRO work uh, on C-130s. So you can do both airframe or power plant work on those aircraft and all of that's under the heading of an MRO. Okay. Thank you. You bet. R- Radio and avionics is all part of uh, MRO also, isn't it, Brant? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Any other questions? I just have one, and I don't know why this is. I so we have. I'm and maybe it's because I see Clint right there in front of my. Like you're right in the middle of my screen there. Um, do we have height restrictions on buildings um, outside of the airport, and and maybe not necessarily have we, not necessarily in Ogden, but have we been working with? any height restrictions in Roy or do we have that kind of a, I'm just curious. So it's a work in progress right now. We have approached all the um, neighboring jurisdictions that border on the Ogden airport and have talked to them about doing a joint um, uh, overlay area for the airport And, uh, you know, it kind of came to head with a few of the, uh, when we had the uh, crashes towards the end of the year and in in particular in Roy. And, uh, you know, I was kind of put back to, uh, to, to Roy that, you know, your jurisdiction is the one that put them there. So you need to kind of police your own and be looking at the airport's been there for an awful long time. And when it was first there, there was virtually nothing else. 
And so the community has grown up and encroached on the airport. So it's very important going forward that we get uh, consensus with uh, the neighboring jurisdictions so that we don't put cell phone antennas, uh, high schools or junior highs or any type of schools underneath the immediate path of uh, the runways. And everybody seemed to be in a concert agreement that we should go that route. And I've done some basics to get Ogden's uh, because we do have that restriction for Ogden future planning, but that's because, you know, essentially Ogden owns the airport. Uh, the others will, uh, I believe, come in line, especially if we're willing to help them out with the uh, GIS technology and essentially doing some of the work for them, which I'm more than willing to do. Great, I appreciate that. Thank you. You bet. Yeah, I think we all really appreciate working with all those neighboring <laughs> folks, that's for sure. Any other questions? Well, what I can just say uh, from the council, we really appreciate you doing, I think it's three pre presentations now you've given on this plan and, and the consultants have come as well. And we appreciate all of your work in creating the plan and then also presenting so that we can try to make sure we get as much community input as possible before we take a vote. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. Now we'll have the opportunity to have some public input. Um, so the same um, standards apply. It looks like we have one hand raised. Um, and I don't, well, I might see a new uh, person. So Brandon, do you mind explaining this one more time how to participate? Yeah, absolutely. If you are joining tonight's meeting in the Zoom meeting, you can uh, raise your hand by clicking the button at the below of uh, your screen, at the lower part of your screen. Um, that will notify us, and then we will see you and unmute you in order, and you'll have three minutes to address the council. Thank you. So with that said, uh, Angel Castillo, your time has begun. Excellent. Thank you, Brandon. Um, first off, I'd really like to thank Mr. Garrett for his thoroughness. Um, I was a part of the work session and I really appreciated all of the ideas that he had. And I completely agree with him that in the future, uh, building of hangars and taking control of fueling via the city is the way to bring the airport to profitability. I'm a big supporter of master plans, being a former planning commissioner and seeing how our lack of an updated general plan for the city has shot us in the foot with regards to transit oriented development. So I wholeheartedly support and say yes to the ALP. I just want the council to be really cognizant as we move forward. And I'd like to ask you to consider when you make budgeting decisions that, well, I think we should accept this master plan so that we have a better look into the future we have to really stay focused on what happens with COVID and for 2020 and 2021, I really don't think that we should be expanding and doing builds on the airport, such as the North Apron, uh, which needs to be funded in this year's budget. Do I, do I believe it needs to be funded for the future of the airport in the future? Absolutely. But we really need to be considerate. Um, and as we just heard in the work session from the police department, we have officers that are, are leaving and we don't have enough money to fund them. And I remember Chief Watt telling me that basically, if you want to do a 1% salary increase, you have to find a million dollars to pay into pensions. And, you know, we're looking through 2023, if we go ahead and we do these other things that are matched by the federal government, we're looking at a total of $4 million contribution through the year of 2023. And what that tells me when we're doing that is we're going to be putting other things above our officers. And in my opinion, what we're supposed to be doing as government is to provide public safety and infrastructure. And while an airport is important, and I do believe at some point it's going to bring us into profitability and it's going to help the city in the long run, right now, we can't be putting things like the airport above our critical infrastructure and essential employees like the police and fire. So um, again, I, I 
strongly agree that Mr. Garrett is the person to lead the airport to profitability. And but please, as you're moving forward and you're considering what you're going to be assigning in the budget, please be very cognizant that we have other needs that are more essential to the city rather than expanding what we have at the airport as far as building things in the next uh, year. Thank you. Thank you. So I see no other hands. Um, since this isn't a public hearing officially, do we need to do a vote? Not to close it. Just close? No, we don't have to, we don't have to close right. it. Thank you, I appreciate your input. Um, great. Um, so now if anybody would like to take any action on that item. I would love to make uh, the motion that we um, adopt our resolution 2020-12 uh, the Ogden Hinkley uh, Airport Master Plan. I second it. So a motion by Council Member Heyer and a second by Council Member Stevens to adopt proposed resolution 2020-12. And this is a roll call vote. Council Member Stevens. Aye. Council Member White. Aye. Council Member Heyer. Aye. Council Member Lopez. Aye. Vice Chair Blair. Aye. Chair Chaburka. Aye. And that passes. And again, um, thank you to everyone for pulling together that report. I really, um, I have a lot of confidence in the process that that plan went through and on the outcomes. And um, it gives me a little hope about the future of the airport. <laughs> Great. So now, um, as I mentioned earlier, we did not receive any public written public comment. Um, and Bryn explained earlier that you can um, provide public comment on any item through our form on the council website or through calling the number that he mentioned. You also can reach out to council members individually with our email addresses or contact information there on the website. We'd be happy to hear from any constituents about any issues. Um, now I'd like to invite Mayor Koldo if you'd like to make any general comments. I have a couple general comments. First, I, uh, I'm looking at the backgrounds. Um, Councilman Heyer had me mesmerized by his scuba diving experience, but Lopez, I'm glad I'm not doing this at home because San Francisco is where my daughter's supposed to be going to school, and I appreciate that background, and uh, she would be totally homesick <laughs> seeing that where she used to run every day and now she's just home stuck with mom and dad. So I appreciate that. And I'll just give a quick thank you to Bryant. I'll um, keep it coming mayor. I'll, I'll keep it on. Okay. I'll let her know <laughs> next time I'll do this from home and she can watch and then she'll be crying in her Cheerios. But a uh, uh, quick thank you to Bryant. Um, he came in well past midstream in this master planning project and everything else. You've done a great job. You've been extremely fair, extremely considerate and thoughtful as we've gone through this. I thank you for that. And just for the record, he's got a purple shirt and tie on and a jacket at home while the rest of us are kind of on COVID deal. So I appreciate his situational <laughs> awareness in terms of where he is and what he's doing. But Brian, you've done a great job with this. We thank you very much. And then just lastly, I want to, yesterday was Memorial Day, and I, I thought a lot about the men and women that have given so much so that we can enjoy what are typically freedoms. Sometimes I, I guess I read on Facebook that everybody's saying we, we have no more freedoms or anything else. But I read a quote from George S. Patton, and it said, it is foolish and wrong to mourn the men who died Rather, we should thank God such men lived. And I think about that as I you know, listen to our police chief and our public safety people. And my family was military and everything else. And um, we live in an amazing country. And, and yesterday was a, a great day to kind of reflect on the sacrifices that allow us to have open debate and open dialogue and everything else. And I thought that that, that quote from George S. Patton was was really topical and, and it kind of hit me in the feels. So just wanted to say that I thank all of you for 
volunteering to do what you do. And, and this has been an exceptional time, certainly with budgets and everything else. Um, and I just want to tell you all how much I appreciate everything that you're doing. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, any other comments from council members? I have one, Chair. Well, go ahead. Well, I, I was going to just kind of echo what the mayor said. Um, I am glad that we finally have a airport master plan. It has been sorely needed for a long, long time. Um, that airport is a gem to our city. Uh, now to have a, a, a thought through um, way to expand it and to, and to make it grow into the into the potential that it has is just wonderful. Also appreciated Chief Watt. And, you know, as I, as I listened to Travis talk, um, you know, they do, uh, they make our city um, the city that it is. And so people can sleep well at night. And, and I, I really do uh, sympathize with, with the, the comments that he made. Um, and, and it, it's just caused me to think a lot. So I, I'm in digesting mode and uh, processing mode on, on that. But um, I, I appreciate uh, our firefighters, our police officers, first responders, um, and, and all that they do for the city. And I, I just want to thank them for, for making Ogden great. Thanks a, a lot. Thanks. And Council Member Stevens? Thank you, Chair. Uh, I echo also what uh, Rich has said and the mayor. Uh, I believe uh, the Ogden Airport, even though we have communities around the airport, if, if it is successful, then it'll add uh, vibrant not only to Ogden, but also to the communities that are around it. And, uh, and I think it's important for us uh, to maybe look at that as, as an opportunity. I agree that uh, during this time, we need to be sensitive and cautious and, and the funds we use. But also we need to look at opportunities that are there so that we can continue to expand and uh, reach the goals that we have. Um, I take issue with that we're not uh, putting the airport above our public service as was commented by one of the residents uh, we do not do that. Uh, that it, it, is, it is not the purpose for us. Uh, uh, the purpose this evening was to listen to a, a plan that we have for the future of the airport. And uh, so I take issue with, with uh, placing those funds above and beyond the responsibilities we have for our police officers and our, our, our public service. They do a great work for us. And, uh, as mentioned last week, uh, which you chair, uh, that you asked the question in making Ogden, uh, are we going to uh, avoid some of the opportunities and the services in Ogden? And the uh, comment came back, says, no, we're not going to do that. And I believe that's what the council is focused on. We're here as, as, as council members, and especially myself, to provide the services that need to be taken care of, the needs for the citizens of Ogden. And that's our paramount issue uh, for this budget coming forward. So we're not going to shortchange our citizens, but we are going to look for opportunities where opportunities can be given. And uh, so I take issues with some of those comments that were uh, expressed here this evening. I do have one question for the administration I read uh, about the issue that Stephen Cook had uh, with, I think they removed a tree or a bush, uh, and I would like to maybe know what has actually transpired with that. Uh, uh, and that's the only com comments that I, that I have. So thank you. Great. Um, maybe the administration can respond to you on email or something, Doug. They're not quite prepared. We'd to do be so. happy yeah. to do that. I haven't heard anything about it. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, not to put you on the spot or anything. Oh no, no. We'll go. We'll go do our research and get back to you. Yeah. 
Great. That'll be fine. Thanks, Mayor. Any other comments from council members? I have a comment, Chair. Please. Uh, <clears throat> I also just want to quickly echo what uh, the mayor and what uh, uh, Councilman Heyer said. Um, I I just want to thank everyone for uh, what they're doing and for uh, the extra effort and troubles that people and employees uh, are going through in these uh, pandemic to maintain services and to um, just to keep everyone safe. Um, I um, I appreciate I appreciate certainly really appreciate the work that everyone is doing. I also wanted to mention that <clears throat> I got a mess. I, I received a message uh, on Facebook. Uh, and chair, you were copied on this message as well, uh, from, uh, it was regarding, uh, doing something in our city so that maybe we can have restaurant service. Maybe we can close the street and do a restaurant service outside on the street. And I thought that that was, um, a, a great, great idea. <clears throat> and I just wanted to know. Uh, ask uh, the mayor uh, if he has heard about this concept before uh, and if he thinks that it might be viable and uh, potentially on 25th Street. And I just, uh, beyond that, I just wanted to plant the seed. And, uh, you know, I, I can certainly follow up um, um, uh, uh, outside of uh, our meeting with uh, my colleagues on the council to find out more about it, but just kind of a, uh, <clears throat> just wanted to see if I can get a reaction from from Mayor Caldwell to see if how he feels about these. We have heard about that, and I've uh, received that email from a few people, and we've talked to some of the business owners on 25th Street, and one of the fears they had was that they couldn't do curbside if you shut the road down to uh, anything other than pedestrian traffic. So we've been talking about that and we've uh, given that assignment to uh, Ogden Downtown Alliance to talk with those business owners and take a poll for that because, you know, they're in charge of their own businesses and we want to take a poll on whether they think that would be a good idea or not. And then if, if they think it's great and they embrace it and they come together and have consensus, then we'll certainly consider that we're of the belief that they're going to try to go to green in terms of the economy in the next few weeks. And so we thought shutting the street down right now might be a little premature until we have a little bit more information, but I did read those comments. We've had a lot of dialogue internally about it. We've pushed that to the Ogden downtown Alliance to have conversations about it. And, you know, fingers crossed, we get to move to green and we get a return to some normalcy. If, if, are opening up the economy has us revert back, then I think there are some things like that that we should be looking into. And, and there have been a lot of conversations, quite frankly, about, uh, you know, we've had comparisons with 25th Street and Pearl Street in Boulder, which is all pedestrian. They've shut all traffic down and made it all pedestrian on their two blocks in Pearl Street and Boulder. And so, I mean, those are, those are, long conversations with with impacts on both sides of that ledger that we want to study and, and look at but no we've certainly read those and listened to them and 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 looked at those and had internal dialogue about it but in the end we want the business owners making that decision not having it come from an administrative level or anything else i, I mean we really want to support our local businesses so if they reach out and tell us no, this is something we really think would be great and we want to do, then we're going to listen to that and we're going to go to work on it. And, and we've had some great ideas that have come and, and we push them through engineering and everyone else, but Luis and everybody else, as is, is you all well know, and as I'm well aware of, making big changes like that sometimes just takes some time to study and, and walk through it. And you need to understand the unintended consequences that come with that. So we've heard them, we've read them, 
We've had dialogue about it. We're certainly interested in looking into it. I, I appreciate it, Mayor. I, I totally agree with uh, everything you said. Def definitely uh, has to be uh, driven uh, by the business owners and uh, all, all the pros and cons have to be weighed out. Um, I just uh, promised that I would bring this up, that I, was, that I would ask about it, and I'll report back that you're working on it, you and your team. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, no, thank you. Thanks. Any other comments from council members? Okay, feel free to interrupt me if you do have a comment. Um, I'd just like to really thank the staff again for, you know, putting all this work into creating the budget and doing these presentations when I know they are on their fourth draft, I heard, I think, tonight. Yeah, so they, they've done a lot of work and drafts on coming up with it. So I appreciate it. And I definitely appreciate the employee groups uh, reporting out to us, too. So thanks, everybody. I think that's the end of the agenda. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Oh, would anybody like to make a motion? I move that we adjourn. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> We're just throwing all the rules out the window today. No. Um, okay, we have a motion by Council Member White, and do we have a second? Yeah, I seconded. Thank you. Council Member Hire seconded to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Have a good night. Oh, any opposed? Okay, no. Okay, bye. <laughs> Stay safe. <laughs>